on the health care law, and it's about a concern we've talked a lot about here on this program, the safety of your personal information on the Obamacare website. Well, now House Oversight Committee Chairman Darrell Issa says he will subpoena a company that did security testing on the site. We need to learn more about this. Joining us now, California Congressman Darrell Issa. Congressman, nice to have you back on the program. Tell us a little bit about what you plan to do and who, who are you naming in the subpoena? Well, thank you, Jenna. Last night, I, 70 days after the launch of the Obamacare website, I issued a subpoena to MITRE Corporation, one of the lead IT providers, and one that all indications are gave warnings of real security flaws on the day of the launch. I waited 70 days, 10 days after President Obama said, mission accomplished, we're all fixed and up and running. Now we need to make sure that all of those gaps have been filled, all of those security shortcomings have been corrected, and of course, the new ones that pop up whenever you're modifying software. What do you want to find out from this company? Well, first of all, we need to see clearly the unredacted forms of what these exact gaps were and why the decision was made f to go forward in a launch when they hadn't been fixed. But more importantly, our investigators need to have this material as we ask individuals at Health and Human Services and other agencies about what they knew, when they knew it, and why they made the decisions they made. Uh, before, during, and of course, even after uh, the launch of the website. And what will that tell you? What do you hope to achieve? Well, I think quite frankly, as we look at IT reform and process reform, we really need to make sure that the next time the signature legislation or the not-so-signature legislation of a president is being worked on at the cost of hundreds of millions of dollars, that those dollars aren't being wasted. In this case, Every time this website doesn't do its job, potentially millions of people and billions of dollars get wasted. So you're, I, I'm using this term, and you can correct me if it's, if it's not the right one, your accusation of MITRE, the company that did some security checks, is that they didn't do the security checks right, or did they do the security checks oh. right, and they, they warned our government of, of the problems, and our government went ahead uh, regardless of that, what exactly is the, the time frame that you're looking at and, and what is that going to tell you? That's a great question and I want to put it in context. We have looked at these documents in a redacted form with some information uh, excluded. We've even looked at what they call in camera. Investigators have looked at some of this information in its full form but not been allowed to take notes or to take the documents. We're now saying 70 days after the launch these documents had better be stale. In other words, these shortcomings in security need to be fixed. And the assertion that somehow these are not appropriate for us to look at to make sure that what needed to be fixed was fixed gets fixed. I want to make one thing clear. MITRE was, in fact, the canary in the coal mine. Mm -hmm. They were the ones that published these reports showing what still needed to be done and why, at least in some people's opinion, this website was not ready to be launched. You know, it's interesting that you say that canary in the coal mine. We heard from MITRE actually in front of Congress, uh, a representative testified about their involvement in the new health care law. Here is what he had to say. MITRE is not in charge of security for healthcare.gov. We were not asked, nor did we perform end-to-end -end security testing. We have no view on the overall safety or security status of healthcare.gov. Well, that being said, why do you still feel that they're the ones to talk to? Well, because they produce documents that we've been made aware of that show not end-to-end -end failures, because this was never tested end-to-end, -end, but piece-by-piece -piece security gaps. You know, and many on the other side would say, well, if these documents become public, this is a roadmap to hackers. Lana, Jenna, there are hackers every day going after this website. If these known flaws that were existed on October 1st haven't been fixed, then not just for the first 60 or 70 days, but even today, we could have vulnerability. Congress has a responsibility, especially when there's been an agreed, known, colossal failure, to make sure the fixes have been done, especially when the President of the United States and his cabinet are saying at the end of 60 days, 
it's been fixed, it's working. Sure. We need to make sure from a safety standpoint that it is. And Congressman, what's your timeline on that as being a representative of your voters and also serving on oversight, obviously, which is a very important job. You're mentioning looking backwards in order to look forwards and, and do a better job next time, but also to make sure that we're secure now. I mean, realistically, when do you think you'll be confident that this website is secure? Well, I think that uh, you're never completely confident. No website is perfect, and nor do we pretend that there, there won't be future bug fixes. If the question is, the ones that were known prior to October 1st, have they all been properly patched, and has there been an end-to-end -end stress test on this site so that we can be confident that at least it meets the standards that eBay or Craigslist or Yahoo would have for their sites. You know, that's really the challenge here is we spent more federal dollars to do a bad job than private sector free enterprise ent uh, entities would have spent to do a good job. And we, we need to stop doing that. One thing that, that I'd like to put a little pitch in for, we have bipartisan legislation that needs to move forward that really changes the structure of how government does IT procurement to make it much more like you would do it in the private sector in order to get value for your stockholders. Well, I'll take a bipartisan pitch any day. <laughs> Congressman, Thank you. it's an interesting story. You know, it's one we're going to continue to watch. And as I mentioned, one that we focused a lot on this show about how secure our information is. So we look forward to having you back and getting an update on, on where this is going and, and what's the next step. Thanks for today. We appreciate Thank you. it.